valuations, do you still find Asia x Japan and emerging markets cheap? Yeah, we do. Um, we tend to look at asset-based valuation measures. So we tend to look at things like trailing price to book, where you've got a real asset that's going to generate your future flow return, rather than forward PE measures um, that, that tend to be less stable. And when we look at things like price to book in Asia, um, whilst we're not one standard deviation cheap, we're still definitely cheap versus the historical context. And that is typically a reasonably good predictor of forward or future equity market returns. So yeah, we do see value in Asia. So for the rest of 2013, where would you advise investors to put their money? Emerging markets or developed markets? Yes, this is a really tricky question. So we, we tend not to, to try and pick markets on that sort of short time frame. But if you want to think about those markets, if you look at the US right now, the macro data continues to be incrementally positive. So, so there's reason that people would be looking at that market. Europe is very, very cheap versus its historical context. Um, last year, Europe got to two standard deviations cheap on valuation measures, um, which is always a fantastic sign for future equity market returns. It's not as cheap now, but it's still relatively cheap. Um, and, and as I said before, with Asia, we still see valuation support in Asia. Um, and, and the reason for Asia being relatively cheap in our view is that if we look at the return on capital, the sustainability of the return on capital uh, and the price that you pay for that today, um, we definitely still see valuations uh, relatively good in Asia. So there's reasons to like all of the markets. Um, we definitely still like the emerging markets though. You're of the view that growth in Asia is not rewarded, but there are valid concerns with China PMI slowing and India recovery is also expected to be very gradual. In such a scenario, what could be some other triggers? Yes, yeah, so, so what's interesting here is um, that a lot of people look to growth um, and look to GDP growth or country growth um, and then think that that drives equity market returns and actually it doesn't. There's a very famous study by, by a man called Professor Ritter um, in about 2004 who published a paper showing that GDP returns do not uh, equal equity market returns and in fact the correlation is close to zero. Um, so, so what we really think when we say we don't think that growth gets uh, rewarded is what we mean by that is that what really drives equity markets is sustainable return on capital. And if you compound that with growth, that's very beneficial. But, but it can't be just growth for growth's sake. And so when we're looking at growth and we're looking at, at the slowing PMI and we're looking at, at the, the China GDP situation, that doesn't necessarily deter us from investing in equities in those countries. With China PMI slowing and its policy on hold, how should we invest in China? Yeah, China is really interesting right now because we have seen a lot of reform come through in the last, again, since probably August time frame last year. Um, and we are also seeing a change in, in what the leadership wants as the key driving sectors in the economy. That said, we're yet to see it in the, in the GDP numbers because FAI has maintained it at its sort of 45% level um, from the numbers that came out last week. So um, when we look at China, again, we still see, we still see good value there. Um, and, and again, this is common across many countries. Cyclicals and financials look relatively cheap versus the defensives in China too.